the story of Ethiopia, the modern day <coughs> Ethiopia, you know, yes. starts from very far in uh, the times of Noah. Yes. You know, the sons that Noah had, the three sons that Noah had, yes. and then you know the, about the curse of Ham. A lot of Christians know about the curse of Ham. This is why they tell you that uh, black people are cursed, you know, are cursed people, black people will be a slave to their brothers because we are the descendants of Ham. And then in the tree line of Ham, you find, you, this is a story that is in the Bible, kwa, tree, kwa family tree ya Ham, you find that alikuwa pia na sons, wengine wanne. And in these sons, you find that there is like the mi, mi, Mizrae, we have uh, from the name Misri. Munajua Misri kwa Kiswahili. So that was one of the sons, and then there was Canaan, and then there was Kush, okay? Now, from Kush, and then there was another son called Put or something. So from Kush, Kush is, was, the, was now, you know, the kingdom of Kush that exists in modern-day Sudan, okay? So when you read the Bible, it says that uh, the, this son, when misery is, is a representation of the son that went and settled in Egypt, and then Kush is a representation. You know, Kush is even mentioned in the Bible 52 times. Kush is the representation of the son that went and settled in Kush. And, so, and then from the kingdom of Kush, it later become, became the what? Agzim. You understand? It later became the Agzim under the reign of Queen Makeda. Okay? Which is the Queen Sheba. Sheba means wisdom. The queen of wisdom. Queen Ma Sheba was the one in charge of the trade routes in Ethiopia. Okay, Queen Sheba went looking for wisdom. She's called Queen Sheba because she's the queen of wisdom. She was looking for wisdom. Who is the father of wisdom in the Bible? It was Solomon. Queen Sheba was with Solomon, you know. They, be they, they were together. And then they gave birth to a son. You understand? And this is the son that carried the empire of Ethiopia. <coughs> One of the reasons why Ethiopia was never colonized is because Ethiopia descends from the tribe of the Lion of Judah. You know this from the tribe of the Talai. The Talai people or Coyote in the Kalenjin. Okay? These were the people with the Lion Totem. That is even the reason why Ethiopia was never defeated during colonization. Because even among their warriors were Lions. These people used to use Lions. They have the Lion Totem. The story of or Coyote that even extends up to East Africa. Alright? So when you go back into his... And these are the th things that are in the Bible now. All right, but the Bible, there's a way in which from this, uh, the curse of harm, you know, when black people, curse of harm was used as an excuse for greed by Europeans and Arabs, okay, so that they could have cheap slaves. Okay. A lot, la, la, last time Pastor T was saying that even, you know, <coughs> black people sold their people into slavery. This is the divide and rule that has been used by Europeans since day one. Okay. To divide and rule people. To tell you that your people sold you into slavery. But slavery started from the curse of harm okay. that was the excuse for greed. And okay. that curse, that same curse, is the one that moved from slavery into capitalism. This system is all connected from the roots. Okay. And if you want to uproot it, you have to uproot it from the roots. Okay. Sawa, yes. Sawa. Yeah. I'm going to have to learn you. But then, <laughs> uh, just, just to be clear, just, just to be clear, um, uh, the tribe of Kush has nothing to do with man Kush. Alafu kwanza si juu. Ebutu wanzi hapo kwa relationship ya black people na descendants ya ham. Yes. Number one, let me say, history is very wide, and the history of humanity keeps on changing every now and then. Yes. Number two, history can be read with broken spectacles. That means you can decide to take one side of history to pursue a certain narrative. Generally, Kush in the Bible represents Africa. That is, any time you come across the name Kush, it is a picture of Africa. Uh, <coughs> remember the concept of Sudan and the demarcations we have today in Africa. They, they are colonial in nature, the boundaries that we have. So Kush was just a general terrain. Okay. And uh, when you study, <coughs> when you study mm -hmm. Christianity and Africanism, you'll discover that Christianity existed uh, in Africa before it even existed in Europe. It was in the era of Constantine that Christianity penetrated in Europe. And what she has mentioned, very powerful. Uh, that's where now Christianity was embraced by the people we call the white supremacists, who now twisted the teachings of scripture to purport slavery. Okay. But the history of slavery was way back in our African culture. Because in the kingdoms, the kingdoms people used to serve as slaves. And anytime you went to war and won a certain community, you took the people 
back at home as slaves. When you go to Ghana, uh, there is a port called the, the, the Gate of No Return. From Ghana interior, the, 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 the white people did not know the interior of the community. So the people that penetrated in the interiors of Africa were fellow Africans. And it was the chiefs and our fellow Africans that became the middlemen in selling of tra slaves. And when you entered in that port and that gate of no return, it was the whites and the Arabs. By the way, Arabs and the, and the whites, uh, the European, became the biggest market of slave trade. So when we talk about racism or discrimination, we were our enemy of ourselves. Now, when they landed in Europe because of economic powers, the slaves became an asset. And it is believed Africa contributed trillion of dollars in free human resource to build the economy of the West. And so through there, uh, the Bible was mishandled. And when you read history, you have to be genuine because there are dark ages of what we call Christianity. And it is in the dark ages of Christianity that now atheism takes and begins now to purport. But uh, that is between 15th, 16th, 17th century, where they tried now to use what she's calling the concept of harm as uh, an oppressed and a caste people, and harm being a black person. But now when we go, there was an awakening in the 19th century in America. And the concept of we are all created in the image of God, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither black nor white, became the concept. And they argued a lot on the letters of Paul, the book of Philemon, was literally written to one man called Philemon to absorb back Philemon, not as a slave, but as a brother, meaning that the Bible never supported slavery. Number two, grammar keeps on evolving. Whatever we may call employment today, in a hundred years, might sound a slavery. So we need to come back to the context, the days, and why this terminology of slaves were being used and the cultural setting of the day. So Christianity has a lot of roots in Africa than it has a lot of roots in Europe. It's only that when it was adopted by uh, European supremacists, now they, became, they made it to look like a white religion. That is where now we began to have concepts like the devil is black and angels are white. And the concept of the black messiah now came through because the African people were fighting for their identity and they began to say this is a white supremacist. Now the concept of the queen of Sheba, we need to understand that there was a lot of interaction. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about the gathering of people that were outside Pentecost. Now, Pentecost was the Feast of Harvest, which was Judaized in nature. There are three people that were there. Number one, the Gentiles were there. The Jews were there. And the only way to become a Jew, you became a apostolite Jew, meaning that a Gentile could convert into Judaism, but they were considered to be apostolite. We also had Jews in the diaspora, meaning that they were out of the Judaism kingdom and they were out in the diaspora. And one of the people that really exercised Judaism and whereby there was the form of Christianity, uh, Ethiopia was one of them. Now the Queen of Sheba went to visit Solomon on a state visit and she carried the spices, not the wisdom. The Bible says the wisdom of Solomon was so admirable. She took spices and went to see the wisdom. And she, she Kidogo too? Yes. Still on the same point. Yes. Queen of Sheba, yes. confirmed, yes. went to visit Solomon. Yes, it is in the Bible. You know Solomon's reputation. Yes. Now, now, and I'll explain that. I'll explain that. The reason why Solomon had 1,700 concubines and 300 wives, there is something called the Haram. This is cultural. Uh, uh, when you look at the story of Esther, there are people who went to present themselves before the king. And anyone that encountered the king, whether sexual or just meeting the king, you became the queen, king's concubine. That encounter, no one could marry you. Anyone that met the king in the secret chamber. So we are not ah. told of any secret chamber. This was a state visit. Solomon receiving a person of this caliber, we couldn't understand how this interaction could happen. Just now, meeting? Yes, no, meeting. You are my wife. Yes. Evil. No, no, no. Concubine. Now, this is what happens. <clears throat> when there are gaps in history, and even in the line of academia, people speculate. Now, speculations are not facts. Speculation is opinions of men. Now, the concept of Solomon sleeping with the Queen of Sheba is speculation. And that co concept came when now the black people began to identify with what they call the black messiah. Prophecy said, out of the root of David shall arise a king. And so the root of David was Solomon, 
And so now they're here to connect Solomon with the Queen of Sheba and come now connect to the Queen of Sheba and connect her to Menelik all the way to Haile Selassie. And Haile Selassie now became like the black messiah and he was celebrated and this concept came through the Nembra Kebra, which is the Jamaican Bible that was written by one of the advocates of Jamaican spiritualism. Yes. And the reason why the Haile Selassie is called <coughs> the King of Kings is because among all the kings of Africa, he was the only king that was not colonized. So he's above all the kings. He was a breed of lions. You look at the throne, he has the lion. He was a breed of lions. They began to identify him as the lion of Judah. But today I want to assure to you that Haile Selassie is dead, and history will confirm he was an orthodox Christian. He even fought the worship of him because he was just a mere man. It is men that build a religion behind Haile Selassie. Okay. It might be called Rastafarianism, but this is the Caribbean spiritual expression of what now we call Rastafarianism, where they believe Africa is the promised land. And this concept of promised land came when now slavery came on board, uh, the British, they took their spiritual terminologies and called the West Babylon and e Egypt. And then now they took all these terminologies and began now to say repatriation and deportation back to our motherland. So when we look at this history, it is so detailed, it opens up, it is metamorphosing, and we have to be very balanced to see where Christianity was manipulated and to see where also where lies are being peddled. So okay. Queen of Sheba did not have any sexual intercourse with Solomon, no data, no evidence. And we cannot justify that. Those are speculations. And so we cannot build a theology out of that. But there That's is a, a possibility. Lie. Why are you defending the Queen of Sheba? <laughs> I'm not defending the Queen of Sheba. I'm just saying, looking at the concept of that, it's not there. Okay. The second thing, Solomon is not the father of wisdom. Jesus was the embodiment of wisdom. In fact, wisdom is given the title he. It's not an entity you read. Wisdom is a deposit that comes in a man. But Solomon operated in very high dimensions of wisdom because there was an impartation that came upon him through a dream, and this was through the encounters of El Elyon. Sawa, Sawa, are you convinced that Solomon and Queen Sheba did not do anything that night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, personally, I... What? <laughs> Which night? When she met uh, King Solomon. Because I think the... The, the disconnect well, one thing, let, let me tell you. So now, <coughs> first of all, let me, let me tell you what I stand for. The fact that is when black people don't even know that black people are in the Bible. A lot of black people don't know that the Bible is a story that is actually talking about black people a lot. And why, you know, you should sit back and ask yourself, why don't black people know that black people are in the Bible? And this one takes us back, and this is why I want to tell you, uh, there's a book called uh, Africa and the Bible by Dr. Yamauchi. He's explaining the concept of even as above, so below. He's explaining the concept of African uh, misinterpretation, misinterpretation of the Bible so much to remove black people. When you check Jeremiah 14, verse 2, go and check Jeremiah 14, verse 2, from the translated, modern translated versions of the Bible and the older Bibles before the modern translation. You'll find that they've removed the word black. Wametoa, the word black out of it. Instead of saying that the people who, who bowed unto the ground uh, upon the gates of Jerusalem, they were black. You know, uh, King James Version, original King James Version says that. But then when you go to, you know, New Living, this thing that they used to teach kids in school, they will talk about the people. You know, they replace the word black with people. Could it be because the Bible is not racist? The Bible no. Does not. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, as black people, do not allow other people to take your story. It is our history. But when you allow it to be his story, that is why you find even kwa matatu apatao, Faces are yes, ni white, 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 white. And you know, a Chinese God looks like a Chinese. A black God looks like a black person. An Indian God looks like an Indian person. And a white God looks like a white person. And we are all diverse, but then we have all the oneness. Because we are different versions of God trying to experience itself in human form. And so, the moment you see that your God looks like another person. That is the moment you start looking down on yourself. And this is why the people who are asking me for reference, when you want <coughs> to start following the true history of Africa, the, books that I will, the first book that I will recommend to you to be your Bible even, The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. Read that book. Read that book, and in the first pages of that book, Chancellor Williams explained to us the white man's divide and rule technique. And wait, you see this divide and rule technique? 
It is the one that is even in our, in our education systems. The education system is brought there as a system to separate the older generation from the newer generation. And this is why educated people cannot even listen to the old medicine men of Africa. Ancestors are dying with our true authentic history. Learned people don't want to teach their children their vernacular, the language of their, ma of their, of their, of their grand grandfathers and their forefathers. They want to identify with English, French, Spanish. You know, people here in Lovington are teaching their children the white man's language and they don't want to associate with their ancestral language when the Agikuyu language, the Bantu language, has been here even before the English language. So you are giving up your own ancient treasures for a white man. So even and that is why Jesus, you took even his religion, his God, and all his ways. Even as Jesus was being crucified, there were easy tribes in Guinea. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, the other tribes were around. So um, also you recommend Chancellor Williams' book, mm -hmm. even like a Bible. You yeah. believe in the Bible, right? Yes, I believe in the Bible as a book that is subject <coughs> to scholarly scrutiny. Thank you. And uh, why do you trust Chancellor William mm. more than the person who wrote the Bible? People, different people wrote the Bible, okay? Human beings, just like us, who are inspired by the Spirit of God. Yes. Did Spirit the... of God stop inspiring people? <coughs> okay, so uh, Chancellor William was also inspired by God to write his book. Yes! I believe because he's talking about what is happening in the society today. He's telling us, you know, this education, literate people, you've seen intellectuals, you've seen the elites, the academias. They are there, you know, they don't want to listen to our old tradition. And that is what the white man is trying to do. Divide and rule. Divide so, the older generation and rule the newer generation so that they so, don't listen to each other. For the sake of a person mm -hmm. who is seeking to know yes. genuinely, yes. with no bias, yes. how do you know mm -hmm. that Chancellor William is telling the truth against these other books, like a, a book like the Bible? Mm -hmm. How do you weigh? Like what... What authority does Chancellor William Let me tell William you, have? in fact, if you read Chancellor William's book, if you read The Miseducation of the Negro, if you read The Stolen Legacy, if you read this book, Zinambatana na the Bible. Zinambatana. Yes. But now there's something that is called the upside down mentality. The reverse psychology. You know, somebody wanting you to hate yourself so that you hate your environment, so that they benefit off of your ignorance and your hate of yourself. When you hate yourself, you will be willing to compromise. But yin and yang tells us what? Yin and yang, the, the spirituality that I believe in, yin and yang will tell you, do not do evil, but also do not accept evil. The white man came to Africa and taught Africans, do not do evil, but they omitted the part where it tells you, do not accept evil. The devil is very governmental and structural. The book of Ephesians captures it. I need to understand, by the time Paul is writing in Ephesians, he had already conquered the goddess of Ephesus by the name of Artemis or Diana. This was a goddess presented through an image, and she was multi-breasted. Because I told you, the fallen... Multi? Multi-breasted. She had many breasts, and oh. she was feminine in nature. She was Artemis or Diana, depending whether you're using the Greek or the, the Jewish word. And people used to worship those idols. You come to African culture, we have an image for these deities because they are visible. These okay. fallen angels are visible. <coughs> they have demons that serve under them. Okay. So what happens is that there is a very structural system and that's what Paul gives in the book of Ephesians 6 and he says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of wickedness in the heavenly places and against authorities. That is what we call the demonic rank. And the, the principalities are now what we call the fallen, the fallen, the, the fallen, uh, the fallen powers. When you go to deep in Satanism, you'll discover that they use the book of Proverbs to talk about the seven forces of evil, okay. and these are the seven devils. Now, when you go now deeper to begin to decode demonology, you'll discover there is a side of the devil that is sold as light. It's called Luciferianism, Lucifer the light bearer. That side is the place of intellectualism. And then there is Satan, the dark side, which is called evil. That's why Revelation calls him that old serpent, that dragon, Satan, the devil. Because it now shows there is a dimension where Luciferianism now comes on board. And when you now dig really deep about Luciferianism, you'll discover it is even the tenant of our modern day academia. 
okay. whatever we study, the philosophies and all of that, is to introduce light to men so that there is godlessness in a community. Okay. And so this thing is real. The devil is real. <clears throat> uh, demons are real. Angels are real. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Someone asked me, Pastor, what, what about if you believed all these years only to discover it never existed? I said it would be an advantage to me, but what about the flip side of that conversation if you never believed only to realize at the very last hour that indeed hell was real? It's better for me who possibly wasted my time uh, than you who <coughs> possibly may not have a second chance okay. to make your decision. Sawa, sawa. And the second thing you said, is a dowry promoted slavery? Yeah, you, you study the, the genesis, not promoted, yes. the genesis of dowry. When, when, you, when you see this African renaissance, feminism, LGBTQ address, I tell you if we are going to address some, some of our African cultures, the yes. concept of dowry was buying a woman who is going to be in your house. That woman never had any rights. So. That's why they even propagators of that. And people will always say, like in dowry lipo, you can't go back. And you'll always buy that woman the value of her mother. So if you tell me we are going back to such roots, I have a daughter, I can't sell my daughter. My daughter is so expensive that 99 goats that were given at home, goats that eat grass, cannot exchange for my daughter. Now so this is, married, the, this, is the, yeah, this is the essence of now married. academia. Yeah. How did you have a conversation with your in-laws? But then I told them, una, una I told them the, the, the value of my wife is the blood of Jesus, and that blood cannot be compared to anything. I told them, I come to honor the parents. The Bible and even culture encourages to honor parents. Honor is not, there is obedience, there is respect and honor. You obey uh, uh, because of rank. You, you respect rank, you obey instructions, but you honor with substance. So I went to honor them, and we are best of friends, and they are my parents. I don't need to buy the loyalty of my parents. I so honor you are, them. there were no set standards at EA bring They tried. They brought some elders, but you I told refused. them, where I come from, it's a kingdom. In this kingdom, we don't buy people. This is propagation of slavery. We don't do that. So this is my wife my partner created in the image of God. God. God said, let us make man male and female. The okay. first creation, God never created male. He created man. Man is not male. That man there is mankind. It is a kind of man that is God. That is the original rendering. So that mankind is male and female. Female is not gender. It's expression of entities of eternity. So now God created the first man, Adam, Genesis 1, was male and female, an expression of the totality of God. So we cannot say that women are weak and men are stronger. That's, that's a lie. There is no side of God that is weak and stronger. And all this revelation came uh, when spirituality began to take place. Okay. Sawa, yeah. sawa. Uh, let me just note that down. You can get a wife without dowry. <laughs> yeah, and I can prove through scripture. Yes. Sawa. Only need blood of Jesus. No, <laughs> no you need to honor. You don't go, Kaumes Mama Ka post your steamer. You need to honor the parents. Honor is a communication you are capable, able to take care of that child. Okay. But don't introduce the negotiation of Nikamo Nanunua. And I tell you, that's the reason why many marriages are failing today. So. Because Ulienda Mazel Kuna Pendam Super, Ukifika Kona discover Kumbo Likua, two bulls and 99 goats. You know, that was your value. Na hapa kwa Tau Shikiki, hapa, you know. Okay. Eh, so, well, so. Kutesa. Noted. Macho. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. there's a lot you disagreed with yeah. uh, as Mr. T was talking. Uh, personally, <clears throat> I don't, first of all, I subscribe to the knowledge of my ancestors. I do not subscribe to any knowledge, any manipulative or emotional guilt, guilt trip, knowledge that will guilt trip you that, you know, <coughs> don't do this. Let's just, and I will not dispute whatever has been said, but I will bring my own side of the argument. And I start with this. The concept, first of all, of the cross or the ankh, that concept comes from the astronomical knowledge of the Dogon tribe in modern day Mali. And if you want to, whatever I'm going to talk about right now, the science of the soul and the stars from the Dogon tribe in modern day Mali, these people used to study the stars there are people who used to walk the Bantus, studying the ground. That is why there are people when you are going to cultivate the studying land. Studying the ground. Yes. Like studying politicians. Our, <laughs> wait. Kitambo, kulikuwa na watu wenyewe wanatembea kiangalia juu, getting the other above, so below. There are people who used to walk, getting their guidance from above, the stars. And then there are people who used to walk, looking below because the, the, the soil would give them the nourishment. When you look at the lands of the Bantus, spices grow without even being grown. 
you know, food. They have food growing around them without those foods even being grown. They found them there, you understand? So there are people who are blessed on the ground, and there are people who are blessed. with. Uh, that is why where I come from, the uh, River Lake Niloids. The, from uh, originally from the Nilo Saharans, we followed the Nile all the way to Lake Victoria. We were people who used to get our knowledge from observing the seasons, okay? And so, when you observe the seasons, the year, even the, the Christianity and modern day will tell you that the year starts with starts in January. It doesn't make sense when you look at it when you study the stars. Astronomy, people who study the stars, astrology, astrologers. We have astronomers who detect detect weather. But then those are physical weather. We have people as above, so below. As above will always be so below. There are people who detect physical weather. They will tell you, kutanye shakesho. And then there are people who detect spiritual weathers by looking at what? At the stars. Looking at the stars. And our ancestors used to teach that. You cannot understand the world you live in without understanding who you are. Because this world, you are the marking scheme to walking it. And therefore, the seasons, as the day, the day is same as the body and the same as the year. As the day starts, so does the body start. The day starts at 3 a.m. in the morning. The year starts at March 21st. And the body starts from your head. 3 a.m. is a symbolism of an Ari sign. That is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Christianity is an African knowledge. Christianity is an African knowledge that was taken and you've been given an upside down mentality so that you guilt trip yourself off of it instead of it empowering you. You fear it instead of it empowering you. But when you understand the concept, the sun starts, the sun reaches in the middle, Sasaba, Cancer, the sign of Cancer, July. The sun reaches in the middle and then it goes all the way to Libra, Equinox. Libra is Atisa, Uko, Inaenda Ukuchini. The sun dies. When the sun dies, it is killed. Scorpio, you know, betrays the sun. The sun is killed by Sagittarius. The sun dies. And then, and that is the story even of, of, of Christians. They are talking, and people who understand what I'm talking about, you understand what I'm talking about. When the sun dies, the sun is born in the period of Aquarius and, and Pisces. Baptized for the sun to start again. And that is how the day starts. Inaenda di sasaba satisa sun imekufa. Literally. Inaenda and then uko chini akuna sun from satisa all the way. Akuna sun until ikujetena from 3 a.m. You prepare again for a new cycle, a new dawn. And so this, when you read the, the book of The Lost Star by Walter, he talks about Sirius. You know, we live in cycles. And these cycles was what was even used to write the Bible. These Bibles that we have, the Kemetic religion that we have, these cycles that we experience on a daily basis. And it is just there to teach you about who you are. You are the universe experiencing itself in human form. No demon exists outside of you. Nothing exists outside of you without it first of all existing inside of you. You are a mirror reflection of everything, even me sitting here. And nothing occurs by a coincidence. Even me sitting here, I'm a mirror reflection of everyone that is in this room. And that is the law that you should live by. No demon exists outside of you that doesn't already exist inside of you. No good exists no. outside of you that does not already exist inside of you. And so you should know that you have the power to give people the power to actually mistreat you, manipulate you, by you not activating the power within yourself. Okay. When you live in a dangerous society, when you live in a man-eat-man -man society, then you have to evaluate your probability of becoming dangerous as well in order for you to protect yourself from this danger. And Christianity is there to kill your vision of that, you seeing yourself. Okay. And that is the reason why our ancestors did not put up the much fight that was needed for them to protect themselves. And he's talking about these are the end times. We've been living in the end times, guys. The truth has not been there. The truth has not been there. It's when the truth has, is coming out. All those years since the, the beginning of slavery, 400 years ago, the truth has not been there. The truth is just starting to come out now. And this is the reason why the, there's a guy called he, he, Hesiod and Hermes. Hesiod and Hermes said they foretold a time when the understanding of the sacred truths will be obsecure to the knowledge and the knowledge will have to go underground to be preserved for a future time. The knowledge was underground. Our ancestors were seeds. And we, we are the ones 
who are growing out of those seeds during the whole period of colonization and slavery that was a survival mode for our ancestors they devised ways to survive and <coughs> one of the ways to survive was what okay one of the ways that they devised to survive this is a verb that exists in all african languages and in luo it says raura tonetek raura tonetek means a coward always goes back home to his mother there were some mentalities that we put in place in order for us to survive the colonial rule. A period of learning for a black people. And right now, we've come to a moment where the truths are starting to come out. And the truth has its own spirit. I do not need to convince you. Pastor T doesn't need to convince you. The truth has its own spirit and it comes to you through anybody. It can so. even come through a street kid. That street kid in Yunadarao Apo. They will come to you and tell you the truth. So open your eyes to the synchronicities of the world. The world is constantly talking to you. And you so. don't need to be told the truth about the world. It has its own spirit. When you hear it, it will awaken your DNA. And that's another thing that I want to say that is biologically supported. Epi epigenetics. Everything that has occurred in Africa exists in your DNA. There's something called epigenetics in biology. When you study epigenetics, you realize that things like skills, knowledge, pain, these things are hereditary. They move from one generation to another. And so you carry the pain of your ancestors whether you want to admit it or not. You carry the truths of your ancestors whether you want to admit it or not. And every time somebody says this truth, when you open your eyes to see, it will talk to your spirit. Because the okay. truth has its own spirit. You don't need to be convinced by anybody. I don't no. need to sit here to convince you about the truth. Mm, the so. truth has its own spirit. You will so. know it when you hear it. I'll, so. I'll, give you, I'll give you a scripture in the book of Acts, chapter number 16, for anyone who cares to read. The Bible says, A slave damsel came to Paul and began to tell Paul, You are the servant of God. The slave was saying the truth, but the source of the information was not the spirit of truth. We need to know that there is the spirit of truth, capital S, the Holy Spirit, and there is truth. The realm of the spirit is so open that you can get data through different patterns. Witchcraft will never survive without the sun, the moon, and the stars. All those coordinates, that is Roman mythology. That's how Christmas came on board, the bathing of the sun. That, that and, is, and when you talk about let, let Roman mythology, let me, let me finish. Okay. You know, I, 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 I like operating on a sequence. Yeah, I want to uh, remind I, I, me to say I that I love operating on a sequence. Yes. So when, when, I, when, when you look at that, is is astrology. When you look at the Bible, they are the wise men who studied the pattern and the star of Jesus. And those wise men, they studied and they said a king is about to be born, but they never went to. They used to serve kings in Babylon. Okay. You need to understand Babylon survived by spirituality. They had their wise men. These were astrologers, people yes. that study the heavenly bodies to give detection. It is in the book of Esther, whereby when Vashti misbehaved, Esther consulted men that understood time, okay. intelligence of the realm of the spirit, okay. not through the Holy Spirit, but through other channels. And but this is, this is where the debate ends. Okay. Those wise men of Babylon, this is what they said, where is he that we may worship him, not so, serve him? Acts Meaning that 16. even Acts 16, it will explain. Yes, even 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 astrologers. Okay. In their own interpretation, yes. they were seeking for him okay. that they may worship him. So. That's every astrological power will still bow at the cross. So. And the cross, by the way, was a symbol adopted from Egypt. It was where they used to crucify men as the worship of the sun. That so. is why when Jesus died on the cross, the sun never rose because so. creation had to bow when the Creator was on that cross. We'll go verify uh, the two. Um, Acts chapter 16, uh, we'll check on that too. We have one minute to close. We'll give to Vivian Pia Dakamojo Funge. Yeah. Uh, there's something you said about uh, some people were blessed from above, others were blessed from the <laughs> ground. Quite an interesting redefinition of bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you said uh, the day starts at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. and the year starts in March. Mm -hmm. What time do you wake up? 3 a.m. You wake up at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. every day. Yes. So what do you do when the others are sleeping? Where were you? Okay. Sour. Sour. As in, I, so the rest of us, when you see Ulala Satisa, we are sleeping Nisawa. when the world is Every, sleeping. Everyone do what, what makes you feel at ease, you know? Okay. Yeah. And uh, before we close, a uh, quick correction. Uh, mm -hmm. That thing you said, your Yaraura Tonetek, uh, for me, it translates to it's very difficult to kill us for a stupid man to die. Yes, it's the same. 
Okay. The yeah. difference is the same. Yeah, it's, 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 it's talking about right. the same thing. Because the, where, where that particular uh, <coughs> saying comes from, you know, during slavery and colonization, the white man was looking for the best among the black people. Okay. If you are the most immune, if you are the most strong, if you are the most beautiful. So parents would make, would down talk their children, make them feel like you, you're not, you're nothing. So, so black people looking at themselves in that way, that is just a, a trauma response that came during slavery and colonization of Raurathon attack. If you are stupid, you will survive longer because the white man will not catch you. Mm. Sawa, sawa. And then, um, mm -hmm. Naisy Dreams, Zawa's channel, squeeze it, where's your lewa na muzungu? Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. uh, as in your, your percept perception of the white man, mm. ni the same, same, yeah. Hey, ni aji, no, I'm, I'm not actually against the white man. Okay. I'm actually against the stealing of the black people's story, okay. the stealing of the African story, ah, yeah. and Africans not knowing who they are. Sawa, sawa. Mm. Final question, mm. just uh, the shortest, uh, like 10, 15 seconds mm. response. Why do you trust your sources so much? Why do I trust my sources, sources so much? So much. Like, like I told you, the truth has its own spirit. And the, the truth has its own spirit. Now, before we cut to, what's that when you to Moja? When it comes to the e history, uh, people saying Greek philosophy, Roman philosophy. Don't, when somebody comes and tells you, you know, intellectuals like throwing huge philosophy words. Like Greek philosophers, Roman philosophers. These people studied in Africa. Pythagoras alone studied in Africa for Pythagoras 22 and years. Go and confirm. Pythagoras Tales. studied. These people got their knowledge from Africa. <laughs> yes. Pythagoras, Pythagoras. The, 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 the master of Pythagoras theorem, studied in Africa for 22 years. For 22 years? Yes. Kwani ni wanjigi? They used to come to Africa for, you know, you, you hear people talk about Timbuktu. Uko nimbali kama Timbuktu. People used to travel from all over the world just to come to Africa to okay. study. Africa so, was the, 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 the first universities, you know, like the university of House of Life universities. Okay. And these things were left in ruins. Ask okay. yourself why were they left in ruins? Sawa. Yeah. Nataka kujua yo shuli ya kina Pythagoras. <laughs> Enda utafute, utapata. Sawa, sawa. Uh, uh, by the way, before Tuanzei, and I mentioned, yeah. mitu alisema hii conversation na yezisha. Minta sema hivi, the conversation needs to end. But leo imeisha. The conversation, <laughs> okay. The conversation can only end. What do I end our funny research? At, at the Mount of Carmel. Let Mount. the real God answer by fire. That's okay. where it is. Because when revivals came, yes. our fathers, our forefathers who are more spiritual and understood it, surrender yes. their own witchcraft under the altars of Yahweh. When the real fire of revival hits Kenya, yes. people will know who the real God is. They will face the moon. It can't help them. But they don't wait. Start doing the work. Start it is doing coming. research. Start knowing yourself. And, and start it is doing coming. the work now. So I'm a revivalist and I know before I die, the so. real fire of God will hit Kenya. Sawa, so, sawa. So, <laughs> I was so tempted to ask Vivian and uh, Pastor T to tell us their perspective of what happens when people die, but I think maybe. Ndatuambia, what do you think about this conversation? Kama to make cover comprehensively enough, but that's it. That's it. That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kingori.